Reef Dudes is sponsored by Ecotech Marine and Bulk Reef Supply. Today we're talking about ozone in the aquarium. What's going on guys? Devin from Reef Dudes. So a couple weeks ago I did a video on aquarium water clarity and I received a ton of questions about ozone since then. Tons of private messages, tons of comments. So today we're going to do a bit of a deep dive into ozone. Now this is something I've been using on my tanks for about six years now so I definitely have a lot of experience with it. Now the first question you know most people ask is you know what are the benefits why do i want to use ozone in the first place well in my mind there's three main benefits and the first one is water clarity once you've seen a tank with ozone it is just amazing the difference in clarity um, if it runs overnight the next day you'll be like wow i've never seen an aquarium so clean and this is the feedback that i've gotten from every single person that i've seen use it um, so it definitely has some magic aspects of water clarity now, when you put fresh carbon into a reactor or into your tank, you know, usually the next day your tank looks super clear, super pristine. That's the kind of look you get with ozone. And you get that all the time without having to replenish carbon all the time, which is a really nice benefit. Now, especially if you have a longer tank, like with my six foot peninsula tank, looking down that long end and seeing crystal clear detail, you know, six feet down the tank right by the overflow is really kind of a testament to the awesomeness of ozone. Um, in a small tank, you probably won't see the big difference, but once you get up to that four or five, six, you know, eight foot, 10 foot tanks, you're really gonna notice a massive difference with ozone. So number two is gonna be scents and odors. Ozone is going to break down those organics, all that stuff that creates all the funky kind of fishy smells. Um, same thing, when you're running fresh carbon, it removes any of those odors in the water. Very similar with ozone. It's gonna break them down, you know, give your tank the sniff test. Don't smell anything, beautiful. Um, happy spouse, you know, you're place smells better you don't have any weird funky smells so that, that's another really big reason for using ozone and that's you know up there with water clarity is probably number two on my list and the third one i'd say is it does break down toxins if you have a mixed reef tank and you have leathers and certain soft corals they'll release a toxin which can inhibit the growth of some of your stony corals um, again carbon will absorb it ozone will help break it down so you're gonna notice there's a lot of similarities between carbon and ozone, where carbon will absorb most things, ozone is going to break it down. So they're both kind of helping rid certain things in your tank, whether it's the yellowing pigments, the odors, or the toxins. You know, one sucks it in, one breaks it down. Easiest way to think about it. So if you're running a freshwater tank, you would probably run it something through like a micro bubbler. So like a, a lime wood air stone or something, get those super tiny bubbles in the tank and have them react. If you're doing it on a saltwater tank, you're gonna use something like a protein skimmer. So it's gonna have that reaction within the chamber of the protein skimmer and then you go get skimmed up. Now there's always that question of safety. Is ozone safe? In large amounts, no, it's not. But in small amounts, like we're using it, it's relatively safe. And in my opinion, it's not really a concern. Again, do your own research you know, judge what's your safety level. Now, within my use case, I'm using it in a protein skimmer with recirculating CO2 media on it. So there is nowhere for the ozone event out into. It's trapped in that chamber. So I don't really have to worry about it leaching into the room. Now, on top of that, I also only run it at nighttime when everyone's in bed, no one's in the living room, no one's around the reef tank. Now, because ozone has a very short half-life, it dissipates very, very quickly. So what ozone is, is O3. So it's three oxygen modules. So normally have oxygen, which is O2. Um, you're basically forcing it through a chamber of an uh, ozone generator, which is either a UV bulb or it's going to use static electricity to break apart those oxygen mo molecules. Now you got the extra ozone attaches and you got three of them set at two. It's very unstable and it wants to, you know, attach to something else and oxidize it. And what the oxidization does is it breaks stuff down. So whether it's the yellowing pigments in your water, the toxins, it's going to attach to it. It's going to oxidize it, break it down. And that's kind of how it works. Now let's go take a look at my generator. Super duper simple to set up. I know it seems overwhelming for people, but let's get into it. All right, so this is my ozone reactor. This is the Poseidon 200, and this is actually on the floor below, and I got a little tube that feeds up towards my tank. Now this guy, it's, you know, very high quality. It's a very nice ozone generator. Um, there's lots of brands out there. There's UV-based ones. This one uses static electricity. And it, right where it is right now actually works very well because it's far away from my tank and it's less humid here, which is a big thing. So you notice I do not have an air dryer on mine. Now, if you are running somewhere very humid, you want to use an air dryer um, because if you don't, you're going to have something called nitric acid that builds up inside of it from the humidity mixing with the ozone as it's being generated. So if I did, I would have an ozone generator and there is dryers you can buy or you could just use the silicate beads, but then you got to recharge them yourself. And I found that to be a bit of work. And so I just haven't bothered with the dryer yet. Now, the other thing you're gonna look at is 
the tubing coming outside of it, it has to be ozone safe. I believe that one's called Kynar tubing. Um, and it just means it's gonna hold up to ozone, not break down. You might see, you know, it says I actually have it hooked up to the input. The input output don't really matter. It's just a chamber that runs through with some static electricity. Now this tube goes all the way up to my tank to the skimmer. And I can see right there, that's actually the tube from downstairs that connects to my skimmer. It goes into a T and this T has soda lime and then it goes off into my skimmer intake port. So ozone never actually ever leaves the skimmer body. Um, it likes not to the atmosphere because it's gonna be trapped in there and recirculating. Now, if you're worried about it, you can always put a bag of carbon on top of your skimmer holes and that will absorb any residual ozone. Now, again, I, don't, I use a very low amount, so I don't overly worry about it. But if you were too worried about getting in your aquarium, you could also put a bag of ozone by the output of the skimmer. But in my personal opinion, if you're running a very low amount, it has such a short half-life, it's not an overly concern. But again, do your own research on that one. Now you wanna make sure your skimmer's actually rated for ozone. A majority of the high-end ones already are. Um, there's two types of acrylic. There's cast and extruded. One of them's ozone safe, one isn't. I don't fully remember which one's which. But check with your manufacturer and make sure it is ozone safe. Um, I know with, for example, the NIOS skimmer, there is an ozone port built in, so it's really easy. There's already a little nipple you can just hook up your line to, you're done. So super duper easy install. Um, I know a lot of people get confused of what's required. It's basically the generator, a piece of hose, into your ozone safe skimmer, you're done. Now, if you're somewhere humid, again, you wanna look at using silica beads on your input to dry the air first, so you don't have any nitric acid buildup. Now, there is some questions I've had about how do you maintain it. Um, so what I do, probably about every six months or so, I will flush it out with RODI. That again, so if there is any nitric acid built up, you're just flushing it out and cleaning it. Um, so I'll just take a big syringe or two full of RODI, I'll flush it out with RODI and I'll take an air compressor and blow it out just to kind of clean it out. Super duper easy, takes five minutes and that's something, you know, every six months or so and you're set. Now, if you're using this on a reef tank, I would highly advise using an ORP probe to monitor things. Um, so if you have one of the higher level apexes, I know they come with it. I believe the JHL does, not sure about the hydros, but anyway, since I'm using apex, that's what we're going to dig into. So if we look on here, you can kind of see at nighttime, we've got around, what is it, 12, 1 a.m., my ORP starts to rise, 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 gets around 400. Then if we look at, you know, here's noon time in the day, it kind of drops back down again. So it does have that kind of rise and fall. Now, just to show you guys the code that I have on my ozones, like it asks us on a very frequent basis. Um, so on here, I have fallback off, set off. So if it's from midnight to 6 a.m., then turn on. If my ORP is above 410, then turn off. So basically, you know, 420 is kind of the highest I like to have it. So as long as it's less than 410, turn off. And if the skimmer is off, then turn off. Again, you don't really want it running without anything drawing air through it. And we're using the skimmer to pull the air through the ozone reactor. So we only want it on when the ozone's on. So there you go, guys. Those are kind of like the top tips on setting up ozone for your tank. Honestly, the water clarity is so hard to believe until you actually see it. Um, you know, I can show you some clips with the camera, but again, it doesn't do it justice. When you see it for yourself, it's blown away. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. As is, guys, hit that like button. If you're new, make sure you subscribe. If you got any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'll catch you guys in the next video.